welcome to Empower, and my name is Carolyn Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I got a few video requests on the medication digoxin. Just so you guys know, digoxin is a medication that has been around since the 1970s. So there is a ton of information on this medication online available for you at your fingertips. Um, this medication is not going anywhere. It is a fantastic medication. It has amazing results with the heart. And I've used this medication for six years. I've noticed a lot of really good effects from it. So it is a medication that I imagine is going to be around for a very long time. And so I'm really happy to do this tutorial for you. So let's get started. Dijoxin is a cardiac glycoside that is usually used for patients with heart failure and atrial fibrillation. Dijoxin has a positive inotropic activity characterized by an increased force of myocardial contraction. The word inotropic is one to point out because it alters the force of muscular contraction in the heart. Other names for this medication are Digitec, Lenoxicaps, and Lenoxin. This medication is prescribed for patients with mild to moderate congestive heart failure and treating abnormal heart rhythm called atrial fibrillation. Therapeutic actions. This medication increases the intracellular calcium and allows more calcium to enter the myocardial cell during depolarization via the sodium potassium pump, which allows a positive inotropic effect and, increases and it also increases renal perfusion and it decreases the heart rate, which gives a negative chronotropic effect. Chronotropic means that it affects the heart rate. This medication also decreases AV node conduction velocity. The AV node is what sets the heart rate. For a normal person, this could be about 60 to 80 beats per minute. However, in a patient with CHF or AFib, their heart rate could be much faster than normal. And this medication will help decrease the excitability of the AV node, which could help decrease the heart rate. Contraindications. Remember this word because many NCLEX questions are taken from this word exactly. A contraindication is a word to use when somebody should not receive this medication. Some contraindications include an allergy to digitalis preparations, ventricular tachycardia, ventricular fibrillation, heart block, sick sinus syndrome, acute MI, renal insufficiency, and electrolyte abnormalities such as a decreased potassium, decreased magnesium, and increased calcium. Also, use cautiously with pregnancy and lactation. This medication is in pregnancy category C. Available forms of this medication are capsules, tablets, and elixir for IV injection. Drug interactions. Drugs such as verapamil, amiodarone, lidocaine, Xanax, aldactone, and sporinex can increase digoxin levels and the risk of digitalis toxicity. The co-administration of digoxin and beta blockers, which also reduces the heart rate, can cause a serious slowing of the heart rate. Nursing interventions. As nurses, we're supposed to monitor the apical pulse for one minute before administering. This means putting your stethoscope to auscultate the heart for one full minute. Auscultate means listen. Hold a dose if the pulse is less than 60 in adult or 90 in an infant. After one hour, retake the pulse, and if it's still less than 60 in adult and 90 in an infant, then notify the physician. Many patients that take this medication for a condition called atrial fibrillation are also placed on a blood thinner. In AFib, the atrium of the heart is quivering, and you are at an increased risk for a blood clot. This should be a video in and of itself, so if you do want to see an AFib video, then post a comment and let me know. Some common blood thinners that you may see are Coumadin, Pradaxa, and Exeralto. Also monitor for electrolyte imbalances such as low potassium, calcium, or magnesium. Also monitor for signs that your patient is malnourished or may have recently been sick from vomiting or diarrhea. Also monitor for kidney disease or signs of dehydration. Digoxin overdose, also known as digitalis toxicity, can occur more easily if your patient is dehydrated. A therapeutic digoxin level in the blood is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. Patient education. Tell your patient to report any blurred, yellow, or green visual disturbances, and also a halo effect while lurking at lights. Also report any rapid weight gain, loss of appetite, nausea, or diarrhea, or vomiting. These are all signs and symptoms of digoxin toxicity. Do not stop taking this medication without not notifying your healthcare provider. Take your pulse at the same time each day and record it on a calendar. If your pulse is less than 60, then notify your physician, or if it's less than 90 in infants. Here are some examples of NCLEX questions. If you look below in the description section of this video, I place links to all of these questions and more, so you can get more information. This particular question is from Quizlet.com. The client's serum digoxin level is 3 nanograms per milliliter. 
What does the nurse know about this digoxin level? A. It is high, elevated range. B. It is in the low, decreased range. C. It is within the normal range. Or D. It is in the low, average range. Now this question is pretty straightforward since we know that the therapeutic range is 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. So we have to go with the level is elevated and the answer is A. It is high, the elevated range. Another question from this site is, the nurse is assessing the client for possible evidence of digitalis toxicity. The nurse acknowledges that which is included in the signs and symptoms of digitalis toxicity. A, a pulse or heart rate of 100 beats per minute. B, a pulse of 72 with an irregular rate. C, a pulse greater than 60 beats per minute and an irregular rate. Or D, a pulse below 60 minutes, 60 beats per minute and an irregular rate. Let's analyze these. Will we give this medication with a heart rate of 100 beats per minute? Yes, that's fine, right? Anything above 60. Would we give this medication with a pulse of 72 and irregular? Now the word irregular may confuse you. However, patients with a cardiac rhythm, atrial fibrillation, or AFib, will many times have an irregular rhythm. So yes, you would still give the medication. The next option, a pulse greater than 60 beats per minute and irregular, this is also fine. So the only answer is D, pulse below 60 beats per minute and an irregular rate. These next questions are from NCLEX RN Review. Again, links are below for many more questions and also for the rationales. A client with congestive heart failure is prescribed digoxin and furosemide. Nursing interventions will include, and it says choose all that apply. One, checking the apical pulse before administering the medication. Two, encouraging intake of water and fruits and juices. Three, monitoring the serum electrolytes. Or four, monitor hemoglobin and hematocrit. Or five, restrict the intake of leafy green vegetables. In this question, there are two correct answers, and they are checking the apical pulse before administering the medication, and two, monitoring the serum electrolytes. The unselected options are pretty tricky, and I will tell you why. Like I said before, when a patient is taking this medication, they're usually on a blood thinner, and a commonly used blood thinner is Coumadin. So it's possible that you would learn about this medication around the same time. A contraindication to Coumadin is leafy green vegetables, so that would probably kind of confuse you. But the leafy green vegetables do not actually apply specific medication. The hematocrit and hemoglobin are not affected with this medication as well. And patients taking this medication usually have congestive heart failure and they need to closely monitor their fluid intake. So you would not loosely encourage them to um, drink extra fluids. The next question. The nurse reviews lab studies of the client receiving digoxin. Interventions by the nurse is required if the results include A, 1, serum digoxin level of 1.2 nanograms per milliliter, 2, serum potassium level 3.0 milliequivalents per liter, 3, a hemoglobin of 14.4, or serum sodium level of 140. So let's analyze these. The normal digoxin level is from 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter, so this is normal, right? So that can't be the answer. The second option, the serum potassium level of 3.0 milliequivalents, is what? Well, normal level of potassium is 3.5 to 5, which I may add very slightly from hospital to hospital, depending on your facility. But anyways, 3.0, everyone would consider that as low. So we'll think about that. And you also need to know that a low potassium or hypokalemia can predispose a client to digitalis toxicity. So we'll think about that option. A hemoglobin of 14.4 is normal, um, anywhere really from 12 to 17 depending on your patient's sex. However, in both sexes, 14.4 would be considered normal, so that's not really a consideration at all. Lastly, a serum sodium level of 140 milliequivalents per liter is normal because the normal range for sodium is approximately 135 to 145. So the only abnormal we have really is the, is the serum potassium level of 3.0 milliequivalents. And this is our answer. So guys, I really hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, just let me know. Um, I want this channel to be for you and to be tailored to your needs. And I get all of my video requests from the comment section. So feel free to post a comment and let me know what you want to see next. And I cannot wait to see you soon. Bye.